Hello, my wonderful fourth graders. This is Ms. De Silva, your school counselor, here with your weekly lesson. Um, October is National Bullying Prevention Month. So our lessons over the next few weeks in October, we're gonna be learning more about what bullying is, um, how we can stop bullying, and um, just making sure that it's something that does not happen here at Darnell. Mm -hmm. And that's whether we're online or in person. So we're gonna talk a lot about the three R's um, of bullying. And that's recognize, report, and refuse. So I'll talk about that more. Let's, let's first talk about what bullying is. Now you might think you know what it is, but sometimes people get confused. So it's really important that we make sure we talk about this. <clears throat> bullying is when someone keeps being mean to someone else on purpose. The person that it's happening to has not been able to make it stop. It's only considered bullying if it's unfair, and it's one-sided. So let's talk about that a little bit more. What does unfair mean? Unfair could mean it's not right, could mean it's just not fair, or we could say it's, it's not equal. And what does one-sided mean? One-sided is when one person keeps trying to hurt or threaten another person. And that other person is not trying to hurt anybody back. So it's only one person. If there's two people, it's only one of the people that's trying to hurt the other person. And we're gonna go through an example so you can understand that better. So some examples of bullying would be hurting someone else's body, so physically hurting somebody or their belongings, so um, doing anything to destroy another person's things or belongings, <clears throat> using words to hurt someone's feelings, so using words on purpose to make someone feel bad, um, that's very probably the most common with bullying. Leaving someone out on purpose. That is an example of bullying, if it's something that happens over and over. And another example would be getting other people to be mean to someone else, or getting other people to exclude someone else. So if someone encourages other people to leave somebody out and not let them join in or play with you. So I'm going to give you an example. We're going to have a couple examples today. So let's look at this picture. Um, Kendra is working on her math assignment. She looks up and sees Jerome looking at her paper. Stop copying my assignment, she says. I wasn't copying, Jerome says. I was just seeing what you were doing. So what do you think? Do you think this is bullying? Well, I'm gonna give you the answer. This scenario is not bullying. It's not one-sided because Kendra and Jerome are both participating in an argument. Remember, bullying has to be one-sided. As far as we know, neither Kendra nor Jerome has picked on the other one repeatedly. So from what we know, this is only happening this one time. So both of these students are having a one-time disagreement. They might be angry with each other, but it's not bullying. This situation it would be called a problem or a conflict. Most of the time when you have a problem or you have a conflict, you can fix it on your own using problem solving skills, right? But when it's something a little more serious or extreme like bullying, it's something that usually keeps happening 
and most likely you need an adult to help you to get it to stop. So today we're especially going to talk about this first R of bullying, and that is recognize. So if you look at the orange um, part of our poster, you'll see that um, we're going to talk more about when you recognize bullying that happens to you or to somebody else. And then in the middle, in the green box, we have report because you can report bullying to a caring adult. And then our last R is refuse, because you can refuse the bullying. When you refuse bullying, you tell the person to stop, and you do this with, with an assertive voice. That means respectful, strong voice. There's other ways that you can refuse bullying too. You can stay near an adult or stay close to your friends if you're feeling unsafe. You can walk away or you can report the bullying again if it's something that keeps happening. So now we're going to do some practice. Remember I said <clears throat> we're going to focus on the first R, recognize. And you're going to be able, I want you to try to recognize whether something is bullying or not. So keep this in mind when we're about to watch a video, okay? Bullying hurts bodies or feelings. It happens over and over. And the person that it's happening to cannot make it stop. All right, so let's see whether you can recognize that bullying is happening. We're gonna watch a video and I would like you to really especially pay attention to what Zoe is doing in the video. Okay, so in story structure, you have a plot, but what do you need in a plot? Victor? Conflict. Your plot needs conflict, like, like in Star Wars. Luke, he has this conflict with Darth Vader. That's a great example of what you need in a plot. Thanks, Victor. Conflict. Oh, I thought it was you. Something stinks in here, Mr. Star Wars. Ever try soap? It works in space, too. Well, technically, I'm not really sure if it would work in space, you see. Soap, it has all these molds. Here he goes again. I'm Victor. All I talk about is Star Wars. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I need to use soap because I stink. Even though, technically, it won't work in space. That's internal conflict. Maybe Victor is a geek, but still. So he doesn't have to be so mean to him all the time. Afraid of something, and that fear is the conflict that keeps him from getting out. This time, everybody head out. Oops. Sorry. Maybe you can tell me all about the gravitational forces that acted on those books sometime. Not. <laughs> All right, so were you able to recognize whether it was a conflict or whether it was bullying? Yeah, that was bullying. <clears throat> How could you tell that Victor was being bullied? There was quite a few clues in that short video. Zoe said mean things to Victor over and over again. Victor wasn't able to make it stop. It wasn't fair, right? Because it was only one-sided. Only Zoe was participating and she kept picking on Victor. So if you were Victor, how would you feel? Most people that feel bullied feel a mixture of emotions and it can really affect people. 
when they get bullied. So Victor could be feeling more than just sad. He could be upset. He could feel angry. He could even feel lonely because a lot of other people were laughing when Zoe would say those things too, right? So let's think about if we're thinking how Victor would feel. Do you remember that magic word that we've talked about quite a few times where you put yourself in someone else's shoes and you try to think about how someone else is feeling? Empathy, right? I just wanted to remind you of that word because empathy is important to remember when we talk about bullying because we have to remember how our words and our actions can affect how other people feel. Or even if we're watching bullying happen, we have to think about how it's making the other person feel. So let's watch the second part of the video and see what happens next. This is bad. I think Zoe is bullying him. It's just not right. But what can I do? Don't bother. Victor, this isn't cool. What do you care? Everyone loves laughing at me. I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't help me. You know it's not right, don't you? This is bullying. Bullying is not okay. Okay, thanks, Einstein. It's bullying. There's nothing I can do about it. Don't you have to be somewhere? No. And I think you should talk to Miss Dia. She'll know what to do. Doubt it. Talk to Miss Dia about what? Amir thinks that I'm getting bullied. By whom? Zoe. Victor, nobody deserves to be treated this way. Tell me what's going on. How long has this been happening? So it's the beginning of the year. So he keeps picking on me and she won't stop. Have you told anybody else about it? No. Victor Where's told Miss Dia about all the ways Zoe had been bullying him. Boy, it was a lot of stuff. So. Miss Dia asked a whole bunch of questions. I could see Victor felt better after talking to a grown-up. Well, you did the right thing by telling me. Um, the first thing we can do is I can have everybody move their desks. I'll put Zoe up front so I can keep an eye on her. And I'll put you next to a mirror so you'll feel safe even when I have my back turned. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you, Amir, for helping Victor out. I will also have a talk with Zoe. No, please. Not yet. I, I think I need to say something to her first. Okay, I will wait, but bullying is serious, and Zoe needs to know it is not allowed at our school. And if the bullying continues, I need you to tell me right away. It's my job to keep you safe. But for now, we can talk about how you can assertively tell Zoe to stop. You want to do that? Yes. Okay. Look. Hello, Mr. Star Wars. Where'd you get that shirt? Geeks are us. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, Zoe. You think you're funny, but you're really not. I've never done anything to you, so you can stop with your stupid jokes and just leave me alone. You're the one who's stupid, geek. You know what, Zoe? You're kind of mean. So what if he likes Star Wars? I like Star Wars too. Whatever. You're both geeks then. I guess we are. Who cares? That doesn't mean you get to be mean to people all the time. Leave him alone. He's not hurting you. Time for class, kids. Is there a problem? Not anymore. Right? There's no problem, Miss Dia. Okay then. Everybody inside, start writing in your journals. All right. So, <clears throat> the
the next R in bullying, the second R is to report. So you noticed that Victor ended up reporting to Ms. Dia. Luckily, he had a friend there that encouraged him to do it. But I want you to think about when he reported it. He had to be really assertive, which means he faced Ms. Dia, he kept his head up, shoulders back, and used a strong, respectful voice. That's really important when you report something so that you're really clear about what's happening. So <clears throat> how did this end up helping Victor? Well, Ms. Dia made a lot of changes by intervening, right? She was able to confirm that he was being bullied and help to make the bullying stop. So she moved desks, right? And it gave Victor a lot more confidence to stand up to Zoe. Also, Zoe was going to be having a separate conversation with Ms. Dia, and I'm sure that was going to be a very serious conversation um, about her behavior. And Ms. Dia was probably going to have to report that to her parents, too. So these are all consequences to um, a student, someone that bullies other people. So now let's think about our third R, which is refuse. So let's think about when Victor refused. Um, he was assertive. When, this is when he talked to Zoe and told her it wasn't okay. He was really assertive when he told Zoe, and I know that took a lot of strength. That's not always easy to do. But he told her to stop in a strong, respectful voice, but he still used respectful words. He wasn't yelling at her or screaming at her or using inappropriate language. Um, he also had his friend Amir there to support him. And when Amir stood up for Victor, it probably made the other people around question whether Zoe was doing the right thing also. So why do you think that it worked when Victor told Zoe to stop? Probably a lot of the stuff we just talked about, right? It worked because of the way he approached her and he was able to have a friend next to him. So today we talked about the three R's of bullying and we talked a lot about how to recognize bullying. So I want you to think before we go, what are some things that help you recognize that a situation is bullying rather than a one-time argument or a conflict with somebody else? Because they're two separate things. Just when someone gets into, um, has an issue with somebody else, it doesn't mean that it's bullying. So bullying has, is mean behavior that's repeated, meaning it keeps happening. It's something that does not stop. It's unfair. So remember Victor and Zoe? Victor wasn't doing anything back. It was only Zoe. And it's one-sided. So um, it was also unfair because Victor doesn't deserve to be treated that way, right? All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining my lesson today. Um, I will see you again next time and we'll learn more about bullying and what you can do. Remember at Darnell, we're respectful, we're responsible, and we're safe. And that's why we um, do not allow bullying at our school. All right, have a good day, bye.